Would you rather have a living son or a dead daughter? That's quite a thing to ask a set of parents, isn't it? That was basically the choice that was presented to my parents. Either let us pump your 13-year-old child full of irreversible experimental treatments, or you may be responsible for their death. The professionals claimed I would experience suicidal ideation if I didn't transition. And the truth is, they were only half wrong. I did contemplate suicide as a teenager, but that came after all the hormones, after the social transition, after a surgeon ignored his Hippocratic oath to do no harm and surgically removed my healthy breasts, leaving scars, infection, and ongoing pain in their place. After years of turmoil and irreversible damage to my body, I realized two things I should have known all along. First, the doctors could only mold me to something that superficially resembled a man, but could never truly make me a man. And second, that even the most convincing superficial changes could not resolve the issues I had going on underneath that drove me to my transition in the first place. That is why I detransitioned and now live my life as the woman I truly am. Gender theory activists would like to have you believe that my story is unique, that my regret is the rare exception to the rule, but as much as I wish it were, that isn't true. All over the world, people are regretting the transitions they were coerced into, especially those of us who suffer these practices as kids. The number of detransitioners is growing all the time. Here are the stats to prove it. A recent study found that 30% of teens and young adults who began gender transition care chose to discontinue their hormones and treatment by the four-year mark. Meanwhile, another study from a UK primary care practice found that 20% of those surveyed stopped their transition treatment. Over half of these decided to regret and began the detransition process. Advocates of gender affirming care often turn their noses up at numbers like this. They'll claim that the vast majority of people who transition never express any regret at all. But many who regret their transition simply don't speak out. According to a 2021 study, around three quarters of detransitioners never report their decision to their providers. Why? Probably because many just want to start their journey to recovery in private. It is not easy to open yourself up to an onslaught of vicious criticism and attacks. And unfortunately, that is a part of my story as well. The minute I began speaking about my regret to the communities that had supported me through my whole transition, I was met with disdain. I was told that I should have known what I was doing, that I was lazy, that I just couldn't stay dedicated to the process, that I was causing harm to people in the trans community. In the end, all these efforts and smears are part of the same campaign. A group of ideological extremists and irresponsible medical professionals capitalizing on vulnerable kids for their own personal and financial gain. But it is not going to work, and the tide is turning against them. In recent years, I and others like me have launched lawsuits against the so-called healthcare providers who helped perform these atrocities on us. If justice is served, they will be answering for their crimes soon because my story is not unique. This predatory arm of the gender ideology movement is affecting thousands of children and young adults across the country and the world. It's infected our institutions and it's tearing families and lives apart. We need to fight back because not everyone affected can stand up for themselves. I'll explain the most effective ways to fight back in our culture and our law in the next video. You can click or tap here and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Chloe Cole for Edify.